NFT is changing the perception of the world. Over 160 countries, nearly 3 billion people, pursue the experience of taste and fascinating feeling brought by tea. China plants the most tea worldwide. The flavour of its tea is travelling across oceans to the lips of the whole world. At the foot of Wuyi Mountain, deep in Enshe Grand Canyon, inside Uji Tea Farms, on the top of the equator, the east is the very beginning. It tells the past and present of tea, and the faith and responsibility as the place of origin. Tongmu village in Wuyi Mountain is a most iconic place of origin of Chinese tea. Located at longitude 117 degrees east and latitude 27 degrees north, with giant trees, moss and bamboo, it has been listed as a natural reserve. Tongmu village is the core place of origin of Lapsang Sochong, the world's first black tea known as the ancestor of tea. Masu, 1500 meters in altitude, the vertex of Tongmu village is definitely the place of origin. In the 800,000 square meter tea hill, covered in cloud and mist, reside over 60 families, a remote retreat, slow and distant. A simple breakfast gives Chen Bi Fang sufficient energy to start a new day. The unique place of origin gives birth to unique tea trees, as well as unique people and things. He needs to go into the depth of the mountain to find the secret to making Lapsong Sochong. That is a special wood. Different from the ordinary pines grown in other regions, only the Chinese pine grown in Tongmu village can smoke a unique rosin out of the tea leaves. It is strictly stipulated in the reserve that felling of trees is prohibited. Chen Bi Fang can only go into the depth of the mountain to look for scattered Chinese pine residues. In his view, this is the only way to restore the most authentic and natural taste of Lapsang Sochong. Amber colour, smoked resin aroma and long an flavour are the distinctive characteristics of Lapsang Sochong. Only the black tea produced in this place of origin and made with traditional techniques can be called authentic Lapsang Sochong. This special gift of nature is the exclusive flavour of Tongmu village. The name Lapsung stands for the authority of the place of origin. Lapsung Sochong needs to be brewed with boiling water. Either Yixing clay teapot or covered bowl can be used. Lapsung Sochong must have Tongmu village as the core production area and smoked and roasted with local Chinese pine. Its soup is orange and always translucent. A sochong with a resin aroma and a long an flavour. Chinese black tea met with the West for the first time in the mid 17th century. Now the amazing taste with a history dates back to an afternoon around 400 years ago. The National Portrait Gallery has sealed the password of time. The senior tea expert Jane is trying to uncover the connection with China. Here in the National Portrait Gallery, we have a portrait of King Charles II. But it's not Charles we're here to talk about. It's actually his wife. This is Catherine of Braganza, Charles's wife. She was a Portuguese princess from a very wealthy family. When she arrived in England for her wedding, she also brought with her a small casket of tea. 
And when she started brewing it and serving it to her ladies at court, she set a new trend and began a legacy which, of course, endures right through to today. That is the debut appearance of Chinese tea in Britain. Astonished at the unprecedented experience, people were eager to pursue this magic oriental taste. Tea became Catherine's greatest comfort in everyday life. Chinese tea started a fashion trend for the whole of British high society. People started to drink tea like Catherine and enjoy the luxurious taste of the sense of identity. Fascinated by the joy of taste, the French Queen even sent people to steal tea from the British royal family. This ridiculous and extreme behaviour was the sensational tea theft in Europe. Compared with the world outside, time here is slower. In the depth of the mountains, there are ancient customs, the origin of Tang tea a thousand years ago. With the sensitivity of a professional businessman, Zhang Wenqi felt the prospect of a great business opportunity. So he made the decision. From China's Tang Dynasty, an ancient and mysterious green tea technique, steaming, is now revealing the mystery of fine taste. According to tradition, only steaming can bring the most natural colour and the most authentic and delicious taste to green tea. The tea gives out a fresh fragrance, changing into the shape of pine needle. This is the most representative feature of Yulu tea produced in Enshu. Emerald green dried tea, bluish green tea soup, and light green leaf bottom are known as three greens, which distinguishes steamed green tea from pan-fried green tea. Steaming is the most ancient tea processing technique. Enshu Yulu is the only tea that has kept this technique in China. Yulu represents Enshu, the place of origin. The rare traditional technique here also enables it to become the representative of steamed green tea in China. The tradition has lasted for thousands of years due to the long and divided history of the primary Chinese tea production technique. The output of Enshu Yulu produced by steaming technique is not large. Kyoto marks another existence of the ancient Chinese traces. In the 21st year of the Jinren period of Tang Dynasty, Chinese tea was taken back to Kyoto by Japanese as a treasure. It has taken root and started to reproduce since then. That is the earliest written record about the overseas spread of Chinese tea, 1,212 years from now. Uji is Japan's most famous place of origin of green tea. In the long past, the five tea seeds from China's Song Dynasty were sown in the secluded yard beside Kazanji Temple, Kyoto. And this ancient tea garden has become the sacred primal place of origin for Japanese. This is the grand gathering of Uji on the 80th day after the beginning of spring every year. Tea, the only focus, makes the city come alive. Okay. 
Shimamura Mika and her friend Masuda Yohai, two young people from the city, are also engaged in this tea carnival. The Japanese are convinced that only on this day, the sprouts picked in the place of origin can reach the excellence and perfection of green tea. The judgment from taste also fills the number 88 with a sense of awe. According to traditional Japanese beliefs, the sprouts of this day are like a longevity panacea, able to eliminate diseases and remove ill fortunes. Picking in the country tea garden gives Shimamura Mika and Masuda Yohai a different experience from the fast-paced life in cities. Inside the fresh leaves, there are many stories that originally existed but are strange to them. The tea leaves from China are endowed with more meanings at this moment. The logging once is gradually forgotten by people, yet the authentic taste is a noble lineage. Eager for the best tea trees and the best pine wood, Chen Bifang has never stopped searching. The vegetation in Masu consists of broad leaves and Mosu bamboo. Old trees growing in the wild are the raw materials of Lapsong Sochong of the first class taste. They grow amid the scattered rocks and soil. This agrees with the saying, the best wood grows among rotten rocks in the classic of tea. The most precious pine wood, together with the most precious fresh leaves, in the eyes of a tea master, is the necessary condition for producing the wonderful taste of Lapsang Sochong. Chan Bifang, who makes and loves tea in his whole life, wished to pass on his craft to his younger son. Yet three years ago, his younger son left him forever in a car accident. Out of resignation, his elder son, Chan Xiang Chun, returned to his father from afar. He made the big decision to change his profession for his father, for his brother, and most importantly, for this Lapsang Sochong produced in his hometown. Chinese 去动它，知道这个茶做到自己满意为止，这就这就是做茶的目的。With with almost no tea planting locally, Britain is actually one of the countries with the most tea consumption in the world. From complete ignorance to indispensability, they used less than 100 years. Whether aristocratic etiquette or fashion trend, people spend money and time for tea, or even risk going to war. On average, today's Britons drink three cups of tea every day. The gap of time difference is instantly filled by tea. as it considered to be one of the rarest teas in the whole world. It comes exclusively from China. What type of flavour do you get from this yellow tea? To be absolutely honest, not a lot. No, it's it's maybe so it's probably nice. just my palate. But... It's a very light tea to be fair. It's just in between white and green tea. The reason I've chosen this one is to kind of help you clean the palate yes. from the cake that we just had. Imagine having one plant in your garden. It's how you pick it, how you process it, that you can make into any of the six different categories of tea you can make from the tea plant. White, yellow, green, oolong, black and poire. 
that China is the only one that makes all the six categories of tea. And yellow, it's one of them that is made exclusively in China. We've been drinking tea in Britain now for about 365 years. Since the beginning of the new century, there's an interest generally in where tea comes from, what it looks like, how to brew it. There's so much interest growing. And um, so we're looking for more high quality, loose leaf teas from all the different categories. But of course, when you want the best teas, you have to go back to China. Steam is the medium between the steamer and tea. The high temperature of boiling water immediately destroys the cell structure of fresh leaves. Thermal actions produce wonderful and rich experiences. The natural aroma of plants starts to permeate. This is the jewel of a sense of proportion between temperature and vegetation, radiating the primitive tension of life. Fan cooling for immediate temperature reduction is aimed at terminating oxidation to keep tea leaves in the freshest state. Set the oven between 50 degrees Celsius and 80 degrees Celsius. Rub with hands and scatter them for initial drying. This traditional technique is called the second time of baking. The water of rolled tea leaves continue to infiltrate. Excessive remission completely reduces all the water in tea leaves, laying a solid foundation for the final shaping and polishing. Tea leaves will be rubbed into pine needle shapes, each of which is tight, thin and straight. This is the traditional form of Anshu Yulu recorded in history. Zheng Weiqi is touching historical standards. Although the traditional manual processing technique is restored, the reality of low output cannot be avoided. The short supply of Anshu Yulu has perplexed Zhang Wenqi over and again. Uji, a Japanese city famous for tea, Sancha is a collective name for Japanese green tea. Those green tea representing the highest level has been given a poetic name by Japanese people, Gyokuru. It represents a standard. The season for picking new tea leaves has arrived again. Pruning tea trees is the everyday task of Mr. Sugita. This is Wazuka Cho a town near Uji. The hilly landform is most suitable for the growth of tea trees. Mr. Sugata is carefully managing his own tea garden. Putting gauzes on tea trees is meant for reducing photosynthesis. While reducing tea polyphenol in fresh tea leaves, it can also increase the content of chlorophyll in tea leaves. People's yearning for sweet and mellow flavours of tea leaves is an instinct. Different countries have different methods. Exposure to blazing sun or shading, display or restraint, all have their reasons. Gyokoro, green tea from Uji, Japan, has deep colour and luster, with a touch of nori flavour. Gyokoro is the supreme grade of Japanese green tea. The shading step before picking aims to increase chlorophyll content and make it appear greener. Because high temperature will lead to quick substance precipitation, causing it to taste bitter, the water temperature for brewing should be set between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. The fresh and sweet Japanese Gyokoro has an ocean flavor. This is what we call kelp or nori flavor. The black gauzes are supported by stands to avoid touching the new buds. The tea made from leaves picked in tea gardens covered for over 20 days is less bitter 
fresher and more authentic. Only such tea is qualified to be called Gyokuro. Besides, this is also the characteristic of Japanese green tea techniques. Japanese people care about the naturalness and freshness of the tea the most. In different places, tea leaves are picked either by machine or by hands. A world of difference. But people all believe the recipe for good taste. Using automatic tea picking machines to shave off the new leaves of tea trees, Mr. Sugata is like doing a haircut for the tea garden. These fresh leaves are about to be carefully chosen and made into top level gyokuro. Mr. Sugata's tea workshop has already realized full automation. For the newly picked fresh leaves, the boiler will provide constant temperature steams. Around 30 seconds steaming will maintain the flavor of tea leaves and prevent fermentation. There seems to have no need for advanced techniques, but precise time and temperature are indispensable. This method has enabled the classic form of Japanese gyokuro, which has the taste of tea and people's expectations. The fresh leaves from Masu Mountain start withering. The once a year tea making is the moment of greatest concentration for Chan Bi Fang. Despite the first class pine wood and first class fresh leaves, can he make the Lapsong Sochong with pine scent and Long An flavor? Everything remains unknown. In the traditional smoking tower, an art of fire is on show. Despite fluctuations, the temperature for burning the pine wood needs to be carefully controlled within 40 degrees. This is the experience drawn by Chen Bi Fang over many years. The heat and pine soot along the flame path spurt out from the brick joints on the floor, baking the tea leaves in the layers upon layers of water sieves on the shelves. Only such severe tests can activate the authentic pine aroma and long an flavor. Chen Bi Fang has devoted all his life to tea, just like the adherence to destiny. Compared with manual rolling, machines make tea strips tighter and more balanced. For this reason, only this procedure of the traditional techniques of making lapsang sochong is replaced by machines. When the fresh leaves are rounded up and 40% of the water has been volatized, it is the best time for rolling. Fresh green gradually turns dark. The twisted veins are still tough and intact. The unique craft enables the unique taste. High temperature ensures the cleanness of the tea leaves whereas the unique pine aroma and long an flavor come from the long ifolene in the smoke. Combined with the perfect absorbability of tea leaves, the taste can reach perfection. As the bell sounded at four o'clock in the afternoon, time temporarily stopped for tea. In Woburn Abbey, the house that belonged to the Russell family, is the origin of afternoon tea in the 1840s. It was Anna Maria, Queen Victoria's maidservant and the wife of the seventh Duke of Bedford, who introduced afternoon tea to the British society. Once, the British aristocrats had only two meals a day, breakfast and dinner, between which was a long time of hunger. A little bread, butter, jam, together with a pot of good Chinese tea, were the solution of the Duchess. 
afternoon tea started to become the fashion in the royal family circle and quickly grew popular among civilians. This tradition has been carried out by Britons for hundreds of years. This is an important part of the British tea culture, as it brings comfort and a sense of safety. Exquisite refreshments are served on a three-layer tray. From bottom to top, the taste changes from salty to sweet and from light to heavy. People enjoy this tradition as if it were always this way. The changing yesterday predicts the unchanging today. In the East, tea ceremony originates from China. Yu Hang Zhejiang has recorded the past and present of matcha. Since Song Dynasty, the monks of Jingshan Temple have started to develop tea gardens here. We have a tea garden now. There are about 30 trees. The whole The outline of history looms, bound to encounter the life today. Since the Song Dynasty, Jingshan Temple in Yuhang has been hosting tea banquets participated by pilgrims. With sincerity, people came here for tea fight, an activity aimed at identifying the quality of different types of tea. It also gave birth to extremely creative acts. New buds were grounded into powder and brewed with boiling water. The influence of this method known as whisking, has continued to this day. With the Zen tea culture of 1200 years, Jingshan Temple is known as the place where tea sage wrote scriptures and the origin of Japanese tea ceremony. During the reign of Emperor Xianchun of Southern Song Dynasty, the Japanese monk Nanpo Shumyo studied here. He was marvelled by the tea banquets at Jingshan Temple, and the matcha that was steamed, ground and baked made him even happier and more relaxed. He took back to Japan not only tea seeds, but also the tea banquet and the way of making matcha in Jingshan Temple, China. The chapter of Japanese green tea was thus opened. Jingshan Tea Banquet crossed the sea to Japan and thus evolved and developed. This is exactly the origin of today's popular Japanese tea ceremony. By the side of Uji River, opposite to the Phoenix Hall of the Bayodo Inn, is the tea house Taho Inn. The path is hidden by flowers with straw curtains slightly dropping in front of the door. Konimasu Karu, a successor of Japanese Seidu Amate Senke, is about to host a tea ceremony with her classmates in Taihoan today. Peaceful and tranquil, in a courtyard covered with grass, abiding by traditional etiquette, visitors tap the gong outside to indicate their presence. A thousand years ago, Ai Sai, a diplomat to Tang Dynasty, took Chinese matcha ceremony back to Japan to carry it forward. Now it has become Japan's national quintessence, introduced as a state guest reception ceremony and known as the best in Japan. Despite many years of friendship, Kunimasa Kaoru and the tea table master both scrupulously abide by the procedures and etiquette of tea ceremony. Boiling water with an iron kettle and whisking tea with a bamboo scoop, people are pious and humble. 
Cups and water meet because of tea, while people and things remain in silence, transforming the oneness of tea and Zen into hazy beauty, both visible and invisible. This is the most representative scene in the Japanese Sado. In the whole tea room, there are strict regulations on everything, including the conversation between the host and the guest, and the placement of cups. The host wiped the tea set, took out tea powder with a teaspoon, placed the tea powder into the bowl, and added boiling water in the ladle. She used a tea whisk to stir the tea soup in the bowl until bubbles came out. The cold and tranquil aesthetic standard is an awe for tea, as well as respect for people. The teacup needs to be turned twice at hand to turn the front side out before you can drink tea. The sense of ceremony represented in every detail is crystal clear. Japanese Sado associates daily life with religion, philosophy, ethics and aesthetics. People regard Zen thought as the root of Zado in pursuit of ultimate simplicity and ultimate plainness. Back in Northern Song Dynasty, there was already a Chinese saying according to which over-processing results in yellow colour and light taste, whereas under-processing leads to green colour and an inclination to sink with the flavour of vegetation. Regarding the understanding of tea taste, Chinese people emphasise on pursuing the flavour of tea, with no tolerance for the flavour of grass. Japanese matcha is exactly the opposite, because it embraces the flavour of green vegetation. The experience of the two tastes originates from the ancient East. Chinese tea used to cross the ocean to Europe and then took root and grew in Africa. The Twining Shop, opened on Strand Street, London, has now become a representative tea brand in the world. The trade brought about by Chinese tea also enabled Twinings to become the world's only tea brand with a history of over 300 years. Apart from traditional black tea and green tea, Twinings focuses more on the taste choices of the younger generation. This brand, established by Thomas Twining from England, was granted a royal warrant by Queen Victoria in 1837. Where I'm sitting, this, uh, which is the world's first uh, dry tea and coffee shop, we are celebrating its 300th birthday this year, which Thomas opened to service his best customers, who were the wealthy and aristocratic ladies of London. Tea was horrendously expensive. By, by weight, uh, it was actually more valuable than gold. It made it particularly attractive to the wealthy and aristocratic ladies of London. In the age where tea tax was high as 119%, drinking tea was a symbol of identity. Britons did not plant tea, yet the taste of tea conquered the proud empire on which the sun never sets. Britain consumes nearly 200,000 tonnes of tea every year. Standardisation is Britain's requirement for taste. This almost scientific perception coincides with Western people's logical system. Together, they constitute an empire-like giant model. Tens of thousands of miles away, at the top of the equator, the Great Rift Valley runs through the north and south. This is the east of Africa, adjacent to Somalia and overlooking the Indian Ocean. It is Kenya, 
one of the birthplaces of mankind 2.5 million years ago. Apart from wild cries and tearing chases, on this magical continent also shine the flavour and radiance of tea, as well as lingering associations with China. Out of the love for and dependence on the taste of Chinese tea, in 1903, Britons introduced tea planting into Kenya, a planting area of 158,000 acres and an annual tea production of 346,000 tonnes are the result of Kenya's efforts over the past century. In the end, Kenya replaced India to be the major tea supplier of Britain. Of the 150,000 tonne tea consumed by Britons, 30% comes from Kenya. Now, the tea produced in Kenya takes up 7.6% of the global production, ranking number three in the world. This is only one-sixth of the production in China. Nevertheless, Kenya's huge tea trade has enabled this African country to become the world's largest exporter of tea, taking up 25% of global tea trade. Tea has become Kenya's lifeline and mainstay. If we talk about the importance of tea to Kenya, the tea as a crop is, um, is harvested manually. So we employ a lot of people, well over 5 million uh, Kenyans benefiting from tea. Tea is planted on both sides of the Great Rift Valley, an altitude between 1,500 metres and 2,700 metres, together with an average temperature of 21 degrees the unique natural conditions enable tea picking all the year round. Crushing, tearing, rolling, full oxidization, accurate control of fermentation time and drying of the brown and black tea by machines, the complete set of procedures was introduced from Britain in 1931. Over the past 86 years, Kenya has carried forward this process which has been used to this day, forming Kenya's representative broken black tea. Every day, 25 tonnes of tea will be processed and made here, of which 80% will be exported, including the Kenyan broken black tea with unique taste. It will be exported all over the world through Mombasa's Tea Wholesale Association. The space of tea that first originated from China has also undergone earth-shaking changes in the course of a long time. It has been on the move among different countries, conquering all the needs for taste. The Oriental tea has come to a common understanding with the whole world for a long time. Circulating put forward higher requirements on tea, seeking changes is the practice for the adjustment of tradition. Kyoto, the Tsuen tea shop located at Yuji Bridge, is the oldest tea shop in Japan. Its history was parallel to Japan's tea drinking culture. Tsuen Yusiki is 24th generation successor of the tea house. After an early rise every morning, serving tea is the first thing. Reverent and respectful, every detail of those imprinted with family roots is gazing silently. Over the past 800 years, the old tea shop has been sticking to the high quality of tea. Inheritance, between change and constancy, is complying with some convention-like rule. The statue of the ancestors was hand-carved by Yakuyu Sojan. When it is time for fresh tea, Tsuen Yusuki needs to carefully select from various tea products the tea that is most in line with the family tea shop concept. 
さん売れてますか。あ売れてます、ね。はい。The increasing tourists enabled Suen Yusuki to see broader market prospects. Sticking to tradition, keeping pace with the times, he was thinking about the operation of the ancient tea shop, how to make it more in line with the current era. Tea starts trying to graft on more trends and changing into different forms. While maintaining the traditional flavor and showing the diversity of tastes, better popularization can make people accept quicker and intuitively feel the charm of tea. Beyond tradition and fashion, the gene deriving from Chinese tea is inclusive and open, just like a philosophy of life. In today's industrialized world, far from the reminiscence of Tang and Song dynasties, modern people's tea drinking seems to have become both corny and practical. The production of Anshu Yulu is far from meeting this high expectation. How should modern means be used to present the traditional classic technique of steaming, increase production of tea leaves, and awaken the taste of history, so as to achieve excellent taste with technology and efficiency? Zhang Wenqi is resolving his doubts. Right now, the Yulu processing machine ordered from Japan is using modern civilization to repeat traditional techniques. These are the finished products Zhang Wenqi has made after repeated efforts, like the performance of rebirth by the same tea leaves, only after the curtain is pulled up and at the moment when tea enters the mouth will the true taste be felt. The same steaming technique, the same traditional methods, what will it be like if we drink the Chinese Yulu and the Japanese Kyokoro in an identical fashion? Like the stories in history, where diamond cut diamond. In the eyes of the renowned connoisseur Oni Shota, Chinese Yulu and Japanese Kyokoro will immediately put on a magic scene. Climate is the flavor, geography is the taste. In the long course of history, people have formed their own preferences. People pursue an extreme process standard in the flavor of tea. In this standard, there are subtle changes in the pursuit of balance. The Japanese Gyokoro following Chinese tradition and the ancient Enshu Yulu from Hubei across time and space are also complements between change and invariability. The two types of tea perfectly demonstrate a conversation across time and space sticking to ancient skills. In Southwark District, at the south bank of River Thames, Borough Market has been around since the 11th century. Over 100 independent stalls are the open-air lecture halls gathering the world's food culture. It's a proper tea, ma'am. You can try the tea. The proper tea. Trust me, you are good in tea. You can try the tea, ma'am. Yeah, because that tea, you're adding a meal. The proper English tea. No milk, particular time, particular harvest. <laughs> we are selling good tea, ma'am. Proper tea. Try it. Darjeeling first class. You can try the second class too, the second peak of the year. 
Selling tea is the livelihood of the Indian Ratan Mondal. He has been dealing with tea for 30 years in the market. Tea has been circulating in the world, and tea masters also pursue tea. From one country to another, this is the migration of tea, and also people's choice. Which ones are the benefits of this tea? Every tea is good if you drink the tea without a milk. Without Everywhere. Because why we add a milk? Get rid of the bitterness of the tea. Yeah. That means adding a, adding a milk, losing all the properties of the tea. Thanks, ma'am. Have a lovely day, ma'am. From the demand of taste, tea has satisfied the world. At the east of Wui and the downstream of Meishi River, an artificial canal flows through the village. Old buildings from Ming and Qing dynasties complement the old wells and folk houses. This is the first stop going north along the 10,000 mile T road. It is also the starting point for going south along the maritime Silk Road. Xiamei village, Wuyi mountain. Coming from a long line of the 300-year well-known tea-making family, the 29-year-old Zhou Xiaolin is the 30th descendant of the Zhou family. After college graduation, she registered the Zhou family tea trademark, determined to revitalize the family tea business. No two value, no beguilement, no haggle over in marketplace is the century-old maxim of Zhou family. In the family history, the Wuyi tea managed by ancestors was sold all over the country, even crossing the ocean to circulate all over the world. Now, the young owner Zhou Xiaolin shouldered the important business. Her father, the big boss, has been sticking to the tea-making process. Her family has been loyal to tradition and following the ancient law for generations. From Xiamei village, Going northward by 4,760 kilometers is the Kyakta port, the border between Russia and China. Since then, it has been stretching in Russian territory with a total length of 13,000 kilometers. It needs a whole year of hard journey. This 10,000 mile tea route crossing Eurasia in the 17th century has won Chinese tea world reputation. The tea shops on Miazimitsky Street of Moscow are like palaces. The touch of Chinese colour that stood out was born at the end of the 19th century and built by Chinese envoys. Yet as early as in 1647, Moscow already started selling Chinese tea. The flavour brought by tea was changing the life habits of the nation. The 10,000 mile tea route, this century artery linking the commerce and trade of China and Russia, was called the Great Sino-Russian Tea Road by Russians. An old and well-known family of tea masters has innate persistence. Zhou Xiaolin is eager to use modern operational management and brand marketing knowledge to restore the trade history of her family. The prosperity of tea, whether in the past or the present, has been circulating in the world. At port terminals, cars and ships go out to sea. 
the once tea trade between the East and West mainly relied on sea transportation. From China to Europe, transportation of tea needs a whole year. For the fresh taste, Britons were inspired. The high-speed sailing boat Cutty Sark was the representative of clipper ship. Speed thus reaches the ultimate. The long distance was thus shortened to only 56 days. Chinese black tea, due to its black colour, is called black tea by Britons. In China's Wuyi Mountain, black tea used to be called Wu Da. Da means tea. This pronunciation was the earliest rudiment of the English word tea. In the place of origin, that is the ancestor of black tea, tea masters stick to tradition and have a sense of awe for nature in their entire life. The mountain road from Tongmu village to Masu is actually not long, but it is enough to last a lifetime. The spread of moss and the flow of water, whoever grasps the tea trees on the horizon can include the most wonderful taste, a whole spring. Tea is colour. Black and white, the colourless contains brilliant purples and reds, giving birth to the colourful world. Tea is number, the left and right of zero, before the invisible start and after the endless end. Tea is music the silence when you have not met a confidant. It is also the playing of a hundred kinds of music you come across in a private room. Tea is the unspeakable infant, as well as an unspoken dying old man. Just like air, sunshine, rain and dew that you might have not noticed. Tea is everywhere. Countries have boundaries, yet tea is boundless. Between the existence and absence of boundaries, the taste from China is the taste that belongs to the world.